Good morning, dear friends and brothers and sisters, regular listeners to this morning meditation from God's Word. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. This is another new day. Lord, in His mercy and in His faithfulness, have given us or extended our lives to this day, that we may live one more day for His glory and praise Him. And so let us give a few minutes before we enter into the daily activities and uh, listen to the voice of God through His Word. Today's meditation is taken from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. Man's chief purpose and chief end is to glorify God. And Isaiah 43, 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Man is created for the glory of God. If that is so, the purpose and the chief end of a man is to glorify God. But if I ever to bring glory to God, I must be transformed more and more like Him, more and more into His image. And so today's meditation is about how does one become like another person. There are three things I want to mention, just, just mention by living with that person and number two by doing things with him and together and third talking with him by doing all these on a regular basis this is exactly what christ had in mind when he chose his disciples in the gospel according to saint luke chapter 3 verse 14 it says the purpose he chose them, first of all, that they may be with him. And that is very important. Unless you are with him, with or with somebody, you cannot do anything with that person. Unless you are with a person, you cannot talk intimately with that person. And so for anything personally, to do, we need to be with that person. For an effective fellowship to be uh, active, three elements are necessary and they are to be applied in our practical life. Number one, the word of God. God speaks to us by means of his word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, and, and, and correcting, and uh, training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, it is through this good work that we bring glory to God. Now, we must get into the Word and let the Word get into us. The Word get into us by hearing it preached, hearing it taught, and reading the Word and meditating and memorizing word. And by meditating, we assimilate the word of God into our spiritual life. Like physical food, it is not all what we eat, but what is digested and assimilated, which benefits us. Now that is meditation. To meditate means to go deeply into God's word. Now Psalm number 119 verse 97 says, 
I uh, read this passage. God wants to communicate with us through his word. And we need to develop a love for uh, God's word. Know the word and preach the word or share the word with someone else. And as you meditate, you are assimilating that knowledge of God's word. Now, the second thing that is needed that we may be transformed into the likeness of the other person is, element to be applied is prayer. God speaks to us through his word and we speak to God through prayer. And that is the importance of prayer. Prayer is our breathing. Just like a physical existence for physical well-being, breathing is absolutely necessary in every moment. For a spiritual life and its growth and strength, we need to have the spiritual breathing, which is prayer. And that is why Jesus said, pray always and pray without ceasing. Is it possible? Oh yes, it is possible. When you understand, when you drive, you can pray. Or when you're doing some work, you can still be praying. And that means living in the consciousness of the presence of God. And my friends, that spiritual breathing or praying is absolutely necessary. Through his word, we speak to God. And, uh, and uh, through prayer, uh, God speaks to us through his word, and we speak to God through prayer. There are prayers that moves God. There are prayers that have no effect. For example, in the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, we read about the parable of the two uh, men going to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the second one was a publican or a tax collector. And um, at the end of their prayer, it was the tax collector who went home justified and happy that God was pleased with him. And uh, while the Pharisee left the place or temple, still a lost sinner. And the, and the epistle of uh, James, chapter 5, verse 16, Prayer of a righteous man avails much. In the, gospel, in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 1 to 12, we read this very interesting event. Peter was arrested and the intent was for Herod the next day he was to be killed. But an angel of the Lord came in the middle of the night and rescued Peter who was guarded by four soldiers with an inner chamber where people who, need, who are going to be killed are kept and with two chains. And the reason that why such a rescue mission was undertaken by God himself by sending his angel into that inner prison from where there is no way that one can escape. Four soldiers were guarding. And, the, and, and the, what was the reason for such a rescue in the middle of the night? when there are several doors to, to pass, and at every door there are guards waiting. The church had an all-night prayer. That is what we read. Peter was in prison, but the church was praying through the night without ceasing. Our prayer must be fervent. Prayer must be specific. And fervent means without ceasing, with great uh, intent, and uh, with great uh, 
labor, tears, and um, and also the prayer has to be specific. You need to be specific what your request is. Many people uh, miss that point. They just say a general prayer. Bless me, O Lord. Uh, and that's all. How? What blessing? We need to be very specific when we talk to God. Now, He knows our needs, but He delights in hearing His children praying to Him. Our prayer must concentrate on... i give you a few references. If you can write it down, and uh, I encourage you to read after this. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. And uh, chapter 4, verse 12. Matthew chapter 9, verses 36 to 38. You read these passages. It talks about uh, the, 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 the importance of prayer and how we need to concentrate on our subject of a prayer. And the third thing is obedience. And so um, we have uh, ob obedience. John chapter 14, verse 21. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and show myself to him. There is no fellowship with a superior without obedience. Now the danger of disobedience is mentioned in gospel according to St. Luke chapter 6 verses 46 to 49. Where Jesus is talking to the followers he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I command? I will show you what he is like, who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. Then he goes on to tell the parable of two builders. One built his house on a rock, digging deep. And on that rock he built, and the rain started falling heavily, and the water started rising, and the torrents of rain caused the wind along with the wind. It, he, the storm hit the, the, the house with the water uh, splashing and, um, and, and the, uh, the, the, the wind blowing. But it says because it was built on a strong foundation on the rock, the house stood firm. And there was another man who is called the foolish man. He built his house upon the sand. He didn't want to dig deep and find the rock. And so he wanted it all easy. He wanted a house, but he wanted to have it easy. So in a short time, he also built the house. But the same thing happened. The rain came down and the water started coming, rising up. And it hit and flashed the house. And that house fell. And great was its fall. Why? Because it has no foundation. And my friends, that is the way. The one who comes to Jesus and listens to him and then calls him Lord and Lord, and, uh, but do not do what he commands them to do. And it is important. And so Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord? And yet you do not listen and you do not obey what I command. Jesus emphasized this again and again. He said in, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verses 22 and 23, Obedience is better than any sacrifices. You remember that verse. And that Jesus emphasized this again and again when he said, If you love me, obey my command. By this, the world will know that you are my disciples because you love one another and because you obey me. And my friends, 
Obedience is better than offering any sacrifices. Always remember, how are you going to glorify God? You glorify God by being with Him. Being with Him. God's Word is very, very important for that. You read, you meditate, and you speak, and you share the Word, and you preach the Word, and continue to recite and to memorize God's Word, thus get into God's Word until God's Word gets inside of you and become a part of your nourishment. And then we have prayer. Prayer is like breathing. And thirdly, obedience. And when you are with a person constantly by doing these things, you are being with Jesus. And the more and more you apply these principles into your practical life, your life will naturally be transformed into the very image of God or Jesus Christ. And this is the purpose for which God has created us, why God is keeping us in this world, that we may bring glory to his name. And that is the chief end of every man. Do you realize this? Live to glorify your God today. That is the chief end of every person. God bless you as you apply these principles and be like Jesus and thus bring glory to him. Amen. This is the great day. Have a wonderful, enjoyable day and share the word with somebody today and bless that person and you will be blessed. Amen.